to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the scripture says as he who called you is holy you also be holy in all your conduct first peter chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. did you know that there is something you cannot live without to see god stay tuned and we'll mention exactly what that something is welcome to the gospel of christ program my name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 14, the Bible says, Without holiness, no one can see God. Holiness is that key attribute that if it doesn't exist in my life and yours, I'll never be able to be in the presence of Almighty God. And friend, holiness is such an important idea, especially in the day and age in which we live you realize that we live in a time of impurity, immorality, ungodliness, and unholiness. Sin is as commonplace as breathing is to so many people today. This fact alone makes it especially difficult for Christians to win the battle for holiness. It is a battle, it is a fight every day for the child of God to really be holy as God who called us is holy. And so today, we want to offer some help from Scripture to help us overcome the battle and win the battle for holiness. Let's think about today, what is it that will help me to really win the battle for holiness? Let's first realize that we are in a battle for holiness. I'm in a battle right now, and you're in a battle right now. I want you to listen to the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, as we think about being in a battle, Paul so beautifully pictures this battle that we're in in the words of 2 Corinthians 10. Notice verses 3 through 5. The scripture says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Here we clearly learn, yes, I'm living a fleshly life, but I'm not fighting a fleshly battle. Our battle is against the spiritual host of wickedness. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. I've got to be ready to fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6, verse 12, from which some have strayed in their sinfulness and have suffered shipwreck. 
1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. In this spiritual battle for holiness, let's realize there's an enemy out there who is striving every day to make our lives impure and unholy. That enemy is none other than Satan himself. The serpent in the garden, Genesis chapter 3. The dragon in Revelation chapter 12. The roaring lion looking to cause people to be lost. And the tempter who tempted Job in Job chapter 1 and 2 is the same one who's after me and you today. We mention again the words of Jesus, for they give us an ever-present reminder of the activeness of Satan. Simon, Simon, Jesus said, Satan, listen to this, desires to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith would not fail. Luke chapter 22, verse number 31. There is an enemy. Satan is what we identify him as, the devil in the Bible, and he wants me and you to be lost. In this battle, let's also realize in the battle of holiness that with God's help, we can and will win the battle. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With Christ as a Christian, with God on our side, we can definitely win the battle. He Himself is our Savior and our leader. He, through death, overcame him who had the power of death and has released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. Jesus has already defeated Satan. The good news is this. Christ came to this earth. He lived that perfect life, Hebrews 4, 15, and in his death on the cross, he dealt a death blow to Satan. The battle's already been won. I've just got to stay true to the Lord and be faithful in his army. The Bible teaches with God's help, I don't have to worry about man, what man can do. Hebrews 13, verse 6, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do? If I stay faithful in this battle, regardless of what external forces may do, God's on my side and I can and will win the battle. But as we think about this battle that we're in, let's also realize this. Friend, listen very carefully. The stakes in this battle are extremely high. We're not talking about land or power or money or pride or governmental control, that of which many wars are fought over. We're talking about something far greater. The stakes in winning this battle are eternal in their nature. My soul and your soul is on the line in this battle. Do you remember the two questions Jesus asked, two rhetorical questions that the Lord asked in Mark chapter 8, verse 36 and 37? What would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Right now, my soul and your soul is what is up for grabs, is what's on the line, maybe a better wording, what's on the line in this battle. Jesus clearly taught us that the righteous They'll go away into eternal life, the unrighteous, into eternal condemnation. And so we're fighting in this battle for our soul. God is on our side. The battle's been won. The enemy is a very militant and aggressive enemy. But we can win the battle if we realize and wake up every day with the mindset, I'm in a spiritual battle and I'm going to do my best to fight it every day and to live for God. In this battle, let's also realize and understand the dire need, the, the dire need to live holy lives every day. Do we realize that God Himself is the epitome of holiness? Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 3, Before the throne of God, the cherubim cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That same echo goes forth in Revelation 4, verse 8, where God is seen as the Holy One sitting upon the throne from all ages. God's the epitome of holiness. I've got to live a holy life if I'm going to see God without holiness. I can't see Him. Uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 15, Be holy as He who called you is holy. Quoting from Leviticus 11, verse 44, The command and the edict from the throne of heaven is... Live a holy life. And again, we mention Hebrews 12, verse 14. Without holiness, 
no one can see God. Now friend, we're not talking about perfection. I understand that we want to strive to live right. We want to strive to do right. We want to be what God wants us to be. But all of us from time to time do make mistakes and we do fall short. And yet we realize we can still be holy through the blood of Christ and through the sacrifice that He makes as we strive to walk in the light. We have fellowship one with another and the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 8. And so let's do our part every day to strive to live a holy life like God wants us to. And then part of overcoming the battle of holiness and winning is to recognize some of the challenges we face today to holiness. Friend, we're living in a day and age where there's no beating around the bush but to say Sometimes it is a real challenge for every child of God to live holy. Do we want to live holy? Sure we do. Are we striving to? Absolutely. But is it a fight? And is it a challenge every day? For most, it is indeed a challenge. Although holiness is an achievable task, it's not always easy. It takes diligent work and effort on my part to overcome sin. And so, Part of overcoming some of these things is to understand what are some of the challenges to holiness. And first and foremost, in my life and yours, sin is the ultimate challenge to holiness. What is it that separates us from God? Sin, Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. Uh, what is it that caused Adam and Eve to fall into death? Sin, Genesis chapter 3 uh, verse 1 following. What is it that causes us to be lost? The wages of sin is death. While there may be a passing pleasure to sin, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, that pleasure is passing. And in view of what sin does to us, let's realize it is that which we must battle each and every day. The Bible clearly teaches we've got to discipline our body and bring it into subjection every day. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 27. Secondly, let's realize that the world and worldliness is a real challenge to holiness. Friend, if I'm going to be holy, I can't live a holy life and live it up in the world, live a, a worldly life as well. And by worldly, we mean those things which are often opposed to God. Listen to James 4, verse 4. James says, Adulterers and adulteresses, such strong language. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity or division with God? Whoever therefore desires to be a friend of the world makes himself God's enemy. John said it so clearly in 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, lust of flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life, it's not of the Father, but is of the evil one. And the world and all that's in it is passing away. But he who does the will of God, that's the one who will abide forever. Let's illustrate the world's attachment to some people and how that caused great problems for them. There are some words that are ever going to echo down the halls of hell. They're repeated in Luke chapter 17 and found in the book of Genesis. And it simply, Jesus simply said this, Remember Lot's wife. What about Lot's wife? What did she do that's so memorable? Well, God is sending Lot and his family out of the wicked and immoral, unholy place of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God sends two angels, two servants to lead them out. But here's his command. When you start to go out of the city, don't look back. You're going to turn to a pillar of salt. The family takes off. They're going down the road. They're out of that horrible city. Lot's wife has to have just one more look. Remember. Lot's wife. There she is, a pillar of salt. Luke chapter uh, uh, 15, we think of a man there who had a great crop year. Luke chapter 18 as well. You've got Luke chapter 12 mentioned. Luke chapter 12 verses 15 through 21. All these people were caught up in various things, but this man is so memorable. Here's a man in Luke 12 verses 15 through 21 who had a great year as far as his crops went. So much so that he tore down his barns and he built bigger barns. And he said to his soul, soul you've got many goods laid up for many years. Take it easy in essence. Eat, drink, and be merry was the old philosophy. Do you know what God said to that man? You fool, this night 
will your soul be required of you? Then whose things will these be whom you've acquired? And here's the point. So is he who is rich, but not in godliness. What was the problem with that rich fool? He had made preparations, been very successful, been a good planner and a good businessman for everything except the one most important thing, his soul. Friend, how, many, how much time do we spend planning at the job? How much time do we spend planning for school and education? How much time do we spend planning for recreation and all these hosts of a, a person may be one of the most successful people in all the world. And yet, if they don't make preparation for their soul, their life has been lived in ultimate foolishness. Your soul is the most important thing in this world is indeed a challenge to holiness. You know, another challenge to holiness that we have today is peer pressure. We live in a world where there are a lot of people who are not keen on doing, who do not want to do the will of God and who try to pressure us not to as well. The Scripture teaches us, do not follow a multitude to do evil. I've got to realize that just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it necessarily right or wrong. It's only right when God says it, and it's only wrong when God says it. Matthew 7 verses 13 and 14 teaches us that there are few who are going down the path that leads to heaven. And so don't let peer pressure, don't let friends, don't let associates, don't let somebody else pressure you into not doing what God wants you to do. But you know, there's another temptation, and that is, uh, and it is indeed a strong challenge to holiness, and that's the lust of the flesh. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul spoke specifically about these lusts of the flesh, and I want you to notice what he said beginning in verse number 9. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 9, these words, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. As you read that list of, of, of sins there, many of those are directly related to the lust of the flesh. You know, sometimes it's as Paul said, the very things I want to do, those are things I don't do. And the very things that I don't want to do, according to Romans chapter 7, Paul said those are the very things I do. Sometimes this old flesh, if we're not careful and if we don't have control over it, can cause us to get caught up in sins that we know are not right. Great men of God throughout time have faced that. Do you think David wanted to sin against God? Do you think he wanted to commit murder and lying and, and, and adultery? Not necessarily, but the lust of the flesh took over in his sin with Bathsheba. Friend, let's realize Hebrews 13, 4 says this, Marriage is honorable, the bed undefiled, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now, for the remaining time, let's think about some things we can do that will help us develop a pattern for living lives of holiness each and every day. What can I do in my life and what can you do in your life to help have a, a daily pattern that will promote holiness in my life and yours? First, let's realize if I want to have a pattern for daily holiness, I need to read my Bible each and every day. Friend, we cannot overemphasize the importance of reading God's Word and having a holy life. Acts chapter 17, verse 11, there is the daily emphasis. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Study to show yourself approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, give attention to reading. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 12. And friends, since it, the Bible is God's message of holiness, since the Bible tells me about God, since the Bible tells me how to live a holy life, and since this book has everything I need, the more I read it, the stronger I'm going to grow, and the more I let it direct my life. God's Word is truly a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Psalm 119, verse 105. The psalmist said it this way, and here's the practical application of what we're talking about. How can the Bible 
help me to have holiness every day. The psalmist said, your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. The more of God's word I can have in my heart and my mind, the more that's going to be a preventative to sin. Secondly, to have a daily pattern for holiness, we need to pray each and every day. The psalmist said in Psalm 86 verse 3, I cry unto thee daily. Jesus arose early, went out by himself to pray, departed to a solitary place, and went out and prayed. Mark chapter 1, verse number 35. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 teaches us men ought always to pray and never lose heart. And don't we realize the power of prayer? James 5, 16 says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man overcomes much. If God's throne is the throne of holiness, then I can approach that throne from which I can receive help to live a holy life. Do you remember Hebrews 4, 16? The Bible says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy to help in time of need. What can I do to help me live a holy life? Pray every day. In fact, Paul said it this way, Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 17. We also mention this, to develop that daily pattern of living as God wants us to live, let's also avoid any questionable places. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses number 20 and 21, that we are not to have fellowship with unrighteousness, Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 11, and the Scripture teaches us that we are not as Christians, we are not to be involved in things that are not right in the sight of God. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, and we are to avoid that which is evil and strive to do what is right in the sight of God. And so, in a world that's filled with immorality, let's be convicted and motivated every day to live a life of holiness. I want to live like Jesus and live the best life possible. John 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. What motivates you to live a holy life? By living like Christ, you can live a life of holiness every day. Philippians 2 verse 5, I want to have the, the mind of Jesus Christ, a selfless, sacrificial mind that puts God's will before His. Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We want to be an example, not an example of unholiness, but rather we want to be a godly example to the world, and we want people to see we're trying to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, 1 Peter 2.21, and that we've been with Christ, Acts chapter 4, verse number 13. What motivates us to really live a holy life? The desire to go to heaven, more than anything, ought to motivate holiness. Do you really want to go to heaven in this life? Is that your main goal? Is your soul your most important possession? If so, let that motivate you to live a life of holiness each and every day. You see, it is that motivation that Paul often used to really be encouraged to serve God. I consider the sufferings of this present world not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. When we get down, when we find discouragement, when life tries to encourage us to live an unholy life, don't lose sight of heaven. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus would say, set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. And so that's the encouragement that each of us have in this life to really live as God wants us to live. And so let's seriously think about our lives. Are we really striving to live holy as God wants us to live? Don't forget these two verses. They're found in your Bible in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without, without which no one will see the Lord. And 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 15. As he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Friend, we thought today about a life of holiness. We thought about things that will encourage us to really live that life as God wants us to live. Now let's do a little self-examination. 
2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says, Test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourselves. Let's look to our own lives and, and let's be honest, for God knows. God knows and sees all things. Let's see, are we really living a life of holiness as God wants us to live? Is my life, I'm not talking about when you go to church or when you go to worship, but when I'm out in the world, when I'm with my family, when I'm with my friends, is my life really an example of holiness as God would want it to be? The way I talk, does it represent holiness? Do I speak in such a way that God would be pleased with the way I speak? Or do I sometimes use language that's not appropriate and that brings shame to the name of God? My actions, the things that I'm involved in, the relationships that I have, are those pure and holy and right? in the sight of God, the way I treat others, those who are strangers, my friends, my family, does that exhibit the command to love your neighbor as yourself? And are we doing good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith? Friend, as we've said throughout the lesson, there can be no holiness without God and without Christ. And today our encouragement to you is if you've never obeyed the gospel, you can begin to live a life of holiness by putting on the Lord Jesus Christ in baptism. If you know that Jesus is the Savior of the world, you're made, willing to make a commitment to Christ, John 8 verse 24, to turn from a life of sin, Acts 3 verse 19, and turn to God. If you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior, Acts 8 verse 36 and 37, would you be baptized to get into Christ? Paul said it this way in Galatians 3.27, As many of us as were baptized into Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. Have you been clothed with holiness by obeying the gospel and becoming a Christian? And if you are a Christian and things in your life have not been lived right, maybe you know, hey, I've done things that are not pleasing to God. I've said things that God wouldn't approve of. Satan has had his way in my life and I need to be done with that. Friend, the Bible says if we're willing to confess, and repent of those sins and turn back to God. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. Whatever the need is today, our encouragement is, let's live lives of holiness and win the battle for holiness. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.